Hey guys, this video is all about Hex, as he is coming to the global server very soon. I've played with him a bunch on the Forerunner server, but this video is going to take place on the test server just to make it easier to experiment and try some different things out. The test server is a content creator server that kind of gives us some more resources to make it easier to test. And you can see this little debug icon on the top, which is the indicator that kind of lets you know that this is a test server. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Hex. First, we'll go over his basic attribute stats, then we'll go into his skills, his gearing, and how to use him and where, so his strengths and weaknesses in terms of content. So to begin, generally Hex is a marksman, he is duo faction between Infernal and Piercer. One of the most important things to note with Hex is that despite being a mainly a Piercer, a marksman, he actually does magic damage type, which grants him a bonus damage to heavy armor, and does not grant him the bonus damage that normally marksmen will have, which is piercing, to light armor. So with that, we'll have a look at his stats. And with that, we can see he has a fairly typical array of stats, reasonable attack, reasonable HP, nothing crazy amongst any of these really. His attack interval of two seconds is pretty decent. And if we take a look at Silas and Hatsut, they are both two second intervals. So it puts him in line with other strong marksmen. So his base stats are nothing crazy, decent attack, but nothing insane, and everything else is pretty much in line. He does have a cost of 12 as well, so he is one of the cheaper marksmen. There seems to be a divide, either marksmen are very cheap or pretty expensive. Fortunately for Hex, he falls in the cheaper region at 12 cost only. Also, being dual faction is really nice. It means he's good in piercer content because he gets the bonus range if you have a Lunaria or an Araka. And if you're using him in Guild Boss, he's great in an Infernal team, as he gains the bonuses from either Pyros's Destruction Command or Twin Fiend's Meteoric Strike. As for what Hex can actually do, well, it's quite a lot to get into. So, his talent to start things off. He gains one card of fate with each attack. And when he has four of these cards of fate, he has a chance to randomly acquire one card from the following of Temperance, Death, and Strength, and he deals extra damage to airborne units. So let's go over the key words. First, there is Card of Fate. It's not an effect, but it can trigger other effects upon certain stacks. So for example, with this, when he gets four stacks, it triggers one of these three key words, Temperance, Death, or Strength. These are at random. Temperance throws three cards, each of them dealing 140% damage and inflicting a 75% slow for five seconds. Death deals 500% damage one time and inflicts burning for 5 seconds, and Strength increases attack by 30% and attack speed by 70 for 25 seconds. So you can see these are all pretty good. Something that's key to note is this is the animation where he pauses and draws his bow very slowly. They do take a while to trigger, and I have had some difficulty with this in the past. It's just something to keep in mind with his basic attacks, I guess. There's Occasionally there's this big draw time in it that can be a bit of a pain but does do a massive amount of damage. So his basic attack is just 100% damage. Prioritizing airborne, it is magic damage, and it goes to 120%. He does have a pretty strong ultimate called Mad Truth. It is manually activated. It starts at 1,000 rage cap, but goes down to 900 with skill ups, but he starts with 700 rage, and the duration starts at 30 seconds up to 35 seconds with three skill ups into his ultimate. So what does it do? Well, when triggered, it increases his damage by 100 up to 140% with two skill ups and attack speed by 100. It also reduces his attack interval by 50% and it replaces all of his cards with the Joker. This effect lasts for 30 seconds. The Joker deals 400% damage three times and inflicts burning for five seconds. As you can see, that's pretty crazy. Massive damage increase, ridiculous attack speed and attack interval changes. And then also he's just by default making these really big attacks that do a lot of damage. And it's replacing the card that he draws rather than Temperance Death or Strength, it's replacing it with the Joker. This is not replacing every single individual attack. Those are just boosted by 100%, which is still plenty. But when he does draw a card, rather than it being random between Temperance, Death and Strength, it is instead the Joker. So this is kind of the best of all of those. The only thing it doesn't have is the buff from Strength and it does not have the slow from Temperance, but it is three cards and it is 400% damage. So it's a lot more damage than Death and it does have the burn effect. So I guess it's really just a stronger version of the Death card to deal more damage. So beyond that, his first passive, his first passive is Fate Trial. Each attack launched has a 15 up to 20% chance to inflict stun on the target for two seconds. I don't know why it doesn't say up here, but it's a two second stun on a 15 to 20% chance, which is pretty good for two seconds. And damage to targets under control effects, such as stun, freeze, and immobilize is increased by 45 all the way up to 60% damage. 
that's a lot of damage increase, especially when his ultimate is flat, giving him 100 to 140%. And with the ultimate, it's 400% times three when he draws a card. Otherwise, with cards, we still get all these damage increases. As you can see, Hex has a lot of damage bonus stacking. When enemies are stunned, which he can apply himself, when he draws one of these cards, when his ult is active, there's a lot of bonus damage, and even when they're CC'd as well. So, lots of bonus damage from Hex. Really, really strong kit for just absolutely blasting people. Finally, he has Fate the Hermit as his second passive. When triggered by receiving damage, he resists the incoming damage and grants himself invisibility for three seconds, so he can't be targeted. He can still take damage, he just cannot be directly targeted. This effect can only trigger once every 50 seconds, though with max skill ups it goes down to once every 40 seconds. So that is his base kit. If you are rolling for skill ups, the ideal place to stop, if you're lucky enough to get his ult maxed, I would stop around his ultimate. And if you're using him predominantly as a guild boss hero, I think this is going to be the main source of value for you. The guild boss can't be stunned, frozen, or immobilized as far as I know, so this is not going to be granting any damage for you. And Fate the Hermit, although it might be kind of nice to avoid damage, shouldn't really do much for you in guild boss as your healer should be able to keep everyone alive. So predominantly, I would stop if you're lucky enough to get Mad Truth maxed early. I don't think he's necessary to max all of his skills as you would with someone like Zilla 2, for example, for guild boss. So let's go on to his awakenings and then we'll talk about his general kit a little bit before moving on to gearing. So his first awakening, during the effect of Mad Truth, there is a chance to draw the Fool. So what this means is in his ultimate Mad Truth, as we can see right here, he is drawing the Joker, 400% damage, three times and burning for five seconds. With awakening one, it doesn't say how much chance, but instead of 400% damage, it becomes 500% damage. So he's gaining 300% damage on that card draw. And he is also gaining a 75% slow that was also persisting for 5 seconds. So this is obviously pretty good. That's 300% damage during his ultimate whenever he draws those cards. He's got massive attack speed bonus during his ultimate. So as you can imagine, he'll be drawing a lot of these cards out. And hopefully the fall quite often. Though I don't know what the percentage chance is for this. So the first awakening is actually quite valuable. The second awakening is bonus attack, which is always good. And the third awakening is during the effect of Mad Truth. Performing basic attacks against enemies inflicted with burning extends the duration of mad truth by one second as you can see this is kind of insane this just keeps his ultimate going for a very very long time but this should be really insane i think it's one of the most important awakenings for him if you do want to use him in guild boss so if you are spending a bit of money to pull for him the third awakening is probably going to be the most important for you and as we know from his ultimate he already applies burning with the joker and he also applies burning with death card draw by default anyway but all of his cards are replaced with the joker during his ult so every four or five attacks, he'll be applying burn himself for five seconds. And you'll have other allies in guild boss most likely applying burn, especially if you're using an infernal team, you probably have a Zilla too. So that's lots of opportunities to apply burning and extend his mad truth ultimate. Moving on, we have the fourth awakening 5% penetration, which is nice to get through enemy resistance. And finally, at fifth awakening, each draw returns one card of fate. I'm going to test this later in the video just so we can see exactly how this works. I haven't had a chance to experiment with this myself before. But I've heard some interesting nuance regarding this, but we'll get back to this later in the video and see exactly how it works. So overall, as you can see, Hex is a massive single target nuka, explicitly in the magic damage type. So Hex is really, 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 really good when you need to do massive amounts of single target magic damage. I really like him for Void Rift. He's really good for general boss content. Although they kind of function differently, I kind of use Hex like my ranged Salazar in a way. They're not really the same. Salazar's burst is a lot more flashy. It's more instantaneous. But when I really need to kill something fast, I always use Hex. He's my go-to hero for that kind of damage. And Salazar is my go-to hero for physical damage in that kind of way. Like killing a boss really fast, Salazar or Hex are my two go-to heroes. So outside of that, how would you actually gear Hex? What gear would you put on him? What gear sets? And what artifacts would you use on him? Well, on the test server, I'm using the Soulbound Arcana. That is because Hex is predominantly a guild boss hero. He is going to benefit the most from Soulbound Arcana, as he's mainly going to be used in content with a long timer. Also, I think it's unlikely that his cards count as basic attacks. The extra cards he draws, Temperance, Death, Strength, or the Joker, or even the Fall from his first awakening. And that means that they would not gain benefit from the other main DPS set which is the Infernal Roar. Infernal Roar granting 40% damage on basic attacks. Someone like Zilla 2, all of her attacks count as basic attacks, so Infernal Roar is a really good set on her. However, for Hex, I don't believe his cards count as basic attacks, in which case the best DPS set to use on him would be Soulbound Arcana. 
As Hex is predominantly a guild boss hero, I would actually recommend taking two lots of crit damage accessories and one attack bonus accessory. That is because the guild boss's resistance is not that high. Nightmare 4, the flat resistance that is negating your attack is not very high. You're predominantly going to be using Hex during Dolores boost. And during that time, a good Dolores, her bonus attack will overwhelm the boss's resistance. And in that case, you're going to want to have a good amount of crit damage to measure up with your attack bonus. So either one crit damage or two crit damages with the rest being attack bonus are the ideal main stats in my opinion. So just to finish up discussing the best accessory sets to use on him before going into the stats too much. The standard three gold ones are going to be the best with Soulbound Arcana, Ageless Wrath and Infernal Roar being the best sets because you gain a lot of bonus main stats. So even if Infernal Roar is not the best in terms of scaling for his other abilities, the fact that you're gaining 18% more if you had free attack bonuses more if it's crit damage. It's just, it's just a lot better as a main set if you can use those set. If you can't use these extra sets, then I would probably lean towards using either Night Terror or the Doom. The Doom may work out to be a little bit nicer as his talents have a very long delay on firing his talent drawing arrow that takes like easily a few seconds to fire and that maybe his Night Terror runs out in that time. If not, then Night Terror would probably be the best one to use. I prefer these two sets, typically for someone like this who's a single target nuker. But aside from that, a lot of the standard DPS sets would be pretty good. The Wisdom as well is a lot of damage bonus, but it is only for 10 seconds. And his ultimate does last quite a bit longer than that. So those are the general recommendations for the accessory sets. As for the weapon sets, of course the Warlord is going to win. It's the best set by far for DPS, attack and attack speed. Outside of that, it's a tie up between Calamity, Whirlwind, or Annihilating Might. If you find that you have very little attack speed, less than 100, then Whirlwind is probably going to be what you want because you do need to get decent attack speed. If you're running two lots of crit damage mains, then probably Calamity. If you're running two lots of attack mains, then probably Annihilating Might. Just to keep it in a good balance, he is predominantly a guild boss hero again. I tend to choose my weapon set based on what I need in my stats. There's no hard and fast rule. Of course, go for Warlord if you have that option. So back to stats on Hex. Your priority is going to be getting 200% of your attack as a bonus. So this number on the right, the green number should be around about twice the number of the base. And then you're going to want to pick up 100% crit rate and then pick up crit damage. You're also going to want more attack speed. The further you are into the game, the more you kind of slide the scale of your requirements. This attack speed is really not good enough for Hex. He does gain bonuses, but ideally with this kind of sets that I'm using, I should be aiming for around 200 bonus attack speed. And then at that point, once I've got the rest of the stats in line, I kind of like to try to pick up a bit of rage regen, but I tend to prioritize that last. It definitely is useful. It depends if you're having trouble syncing things up in Guild Boss. I would definitely put a bit more focus on attack speed than this gear is showing. So moving on to artifacts, I think the best artifact is going to be Never Messenger. He is predominantly going to be a Guild Boss hero. And even outside of that, he is a single target hero. He is attacking the same target repeatedly. So Never Messenger is going to be the best one to use on him. You could use a Idril's Gaze on him if you're using him in Gear Raid 3 on the right side. He does attack fast enough that he should be proccing this. But again, it's a three second buff that you gain from Idril's Gaze. And there is a chance that it expires while you're charging your talent. So I think it's predominantly going to be Never Messenger, but you may find some use out of Idril's gaze on the right lane in Gear Raid 3. So that covers the gearing of Hex, it covers his base kit, his awakenings, the artifacts, pretty much everything I can think to cover in that. So let us quickly talk about where you can use him and then we'll do some quick tests. He's going to be good in promotion raid, he'll be okay in resource raid, but this content isn't hard so it doesn't really matter. He is very very good in guild boss, he can pump out some pretty great damage. I've been experimenting and messing about on the test server with some pretty messy stuff, but you can see Hex is doing a decent job at 50 million damage. Guild boss is of course one of the best places to put him, and, and really there are three dominant teams in guild boss. You have the nightmare team which I think is the most accessible for the majority of players, given that we get Wrath, Abomination is fusible, and a lot of people get Volker, which is good for starter teams. So we have three really good accessible heroes there. And then there's also another epic, which is very good, which is Deimos. Deimos is really, when he's in gear, Deimos is really good in guild boss. So the Nightmare team is tends to be one of the most common teams that you'll see people using. Aside from Nightmare, we have an Infernal team, which Hex can play in. That's typically a Twin Fiend or a Pyros with a Zilla 2, a Setram and a Hex or a Nocturne. Those heroes make up most of the staple Infernal teams in Guild Boss. And finally, the third team you see commonly is a Piercer team using an Araka, Silas, Calypso. And you could fit Hex in there as well if you're not running an Infernal team. 
So Hex fits into two of the three best teams in Guild Boss. So he's a he really, really good hero to use in Guild Boss. He fits into two of the three main teams that you see used. And he provides some really good single target nukes. So yeah, Hex is clearly a really good Guild Boss hero. Aside from Guild Boss, we have the Gear Raids. In Gear Raid 1, although he does deal magic damage, it is single target. And he will get caught up firing at skeletons, which isn't really what you want from him. You would want him to be focusing down specific heroes. And because he has these long draws during his ultimate when he gets to four cards, it leads to him blowing a massive amount of damage on a single squishy enemy. And it leads to him not contributing a lot of damage. There is one exception to taking single target damage dealers in Gear Raid 1, or at least one dominant exception, and that is using Silas. The main reason for using Silas is to kill the Scaled Komodo as well as the Jungle Master boss, the Elowin boss, as he can get through their resistances and just churn them out and get rid of them really quick, so Silas is very good. I don't think Hex is going to fulfill this same niche as he has a bit more draw and a bit more delay on his attacks and he doesn't have the resistance penetration that they do, though you may be able to make it work. I, from my testing, it didn't seem to be very effective. In Gear Raid 1, Hex again is not very ideal for this content. The damage coming out is too consistent for him to dodge. Sure, he can dodge every 40 seconds, but that's not enough for him to avoid the sandstorms, for example. He may be able to dodge a Shriek if he's lucky, but most of the time he's going to be taking passive damage from a sandstorm or the earth shakes. Also, with Hex taking a long time to draw his massive burst attacks, he ends up just massively overkilling the smaller guards that you end up dealing with throughout the rest of the fight. So he's better at dealing with bosses than he is small, weak trash enemies. In Gear Raid 3, Hex does actually have some pretty good use. You can place him on the right side over here facing up. And because he can dodge an attack every now and then, he can deal with the Fogborn Deadeyes. But you do say they have higher resistance. And from testing the enemy resistances, magic resistance is very highly resisted in the later stages. I don't know why it's showing around here on the bar. I can promise you. For example, the Deadeye Tyrant in the middle, it is not here on the bar. <laughs> In stage 21, which I have selected right now, this magic resistance, which is less than half a bar, is actually nearly 15,000 flat magic resistance. So that is a lot of resistance that Hex needs to overcome. It is still 9.5k thereabouts for physical damage. So even this bar, though it looks low, is not that low. In the middle, you may be able to overcome that with a Dolores. Her attack boost is going to help you overwhelm this resistance and it will be a really, really big help. But if you're using Hex on the right side by himself, he's not going to be getting the Dolores boost. He is going to have to get through a really high amount of magic resistance by himself. And he doesn't have any penetration innately in his kit. So that is going to be a very tall order to ask for. But in the lower stages of 19, he can handle the right side by himself and do a really good job. As for the faction trial, Hex is actually going to be very good. Bear in mind, recently they added stages 10 to 12, which I still haven't tried, I admit. But there are two of them, of course, that he can participate in. He can participate in both the Infernal and the Piercer trials over here. And the basic trial also has enemies with high physical damage resistance. As we look over here, we have these fallen defenders here with massive defense. And even the fallen reapers have very high defense as well. And the fallen overseers have high defense. And the boss Dimitri. So magic damage is king in the basic trial and Hex is no exception to that. He's going to be very good. Also, he can dodge single instances every 40 to 50 seconds of damage. So that's really good in this content. So Hex is going to be very, very good in the trials. And as they are getting harder and he is dual faction as well as being good in the basic trial, he's going to be really good in a lot of this content. So I, I think it's actually worth stating that he is going to be pretty great in faction trial. As for Tide, he actually has a pretty good base BP. His battle power is quite high innately. Not insane, but pretty good. So he'll be a good hero for Tide. So that leaves three areas of content remaining. The campaign, which goes to chapter 9 currently, Void Rift, and Arena. So, regarding the campaign, I think he's pretty good. He has his own way of dodging damage, which is pretty good for having him placed away from allies. He has really good burst damage for killing bosses, and he has magic damage which can help against certain enemies. The main bosses in chapter 9, the later ones, have quite high resistance though. We have Herdus the Great Sage with pretty high magic resistance, and we have Herdus the Myth Creator and the Forbidden Scholar, both of these guys have high magic resistance, so not ideal for Hex there, but generally in the campaign I think he's very good. He is going to be very good in Void Rift, there is a lot of content where you need to deal massive single target damage to enemies with high physical resistance. In that content I find Hex to be really really good. Void Rift tends to have lots of stages with not many enemies, but quite tanky, and places like that you really really do want to have Hex. 
other than Hex, Nocturne fulfills that role quite well. So I do quite like having single target magic damage nukers for Void Rift. And finally, we have the arena content. So I've jumped over to the Forerunner server just to show you how he's rated here, or the most deployed heroes here. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but it gives us an idea. So for anti-air, you can see he's not deployed all that much. He, he just has a lot of delay on his attacks, although he has really good single target damage. The inconsistency with his talent, the long draw attack, makes him not super reliable, I think, for this content. Though he'll be good against the Deadeye Tyrants, but you can see Silas is a lot higher up because his damage is more reliable. In AoE DPS, so more magic content typically, though not always, he is not even present. Again, he's, he's not really AoE damage and he's not very reliable. For single target damage, you do see him, but it is all the way down at position 14. This isn't really indicative of a lot. As you can see, Valeria is at 13 and Valeria is actually insanely good in single target damage. So Hex may be a lot better than this is indicating, but I find him just not reliable enough with the big delays on his talent. But if you can find a way to time it so that you can consistently have him firing his big attacks just as the enemies are spawning, then he'll be great. A lot of arena comes down to can you control the flow of the waves? If you are winning the waves fast, like really fast, you control the pace of the arena and it's very easy for you to win. For Hex, if you can control the pace and dominate really fast, then he'll be great. But as soon as you lose control of the pace, they end faster than you had in your initial setup auto run. Then his ult will start to be lining up at awkward times, or rather his talent will start drawing at awkward times, and it will just make him not very efficient. That is going to be the same in sustained DPS. He's down at 16 here, and I think it's kind of the same thing. He's just a little bit inconsistent. All right, I just did a bunch of guild boss tests. I did free in this Soulbound Arcana set, and I did free and an Infernal Raw set with very similar stats. The Soulbound Arcana set I'm using that right now is a little bit better. It has 20-ish more attack speed, but I'll, I'll put that up in a second, the Infernal Raw set to compare. But free autos of Nightmare 4 using this set, the same auto for all six of these tests. We had 57.1, 61.2, and 57.8 million damage using this set of Soulbound Arcana. And I'll put a picture up now of the Infernal Raw set I was using. And with that set, we had 50.9, 51.6, and 51.4 million damage in Nightmare 4 again. So it's not the most scientific of tests. I didn't make sure to check every individual hit was applying more damage with max stacks of Soulbound Arcana than it was of the Infernal Raw or to check how exactly it's applying. But we can see from this that you do more damage with a Soulbound Arcana set in Guild Boss, which I think is the main takeaway we want to find out. So that's cool. We figured that out. We have a rough average of damage. We know it's around with this set on this account with this sloppy auto. <laughs> around 57 to 61 million damage in guild boss. So now I'm going to push the awakenings. You can see I've pulled a bunch on this server to get hold of certain heroes to test. We're going to awaken him once and we're going to do the same auto tests using just the Soulbound Arcana. I think I'm pretty confident now that Soulbound Arcana is the best set to use on him. So I'm going to auto on this three times to work out the rough average damage that you can get with Awakened 1 versus Awakened 0. And I'll do that all the way through to Awakened 5. So I'll jump back once I've got the results. Hey guys, the results are in. I have done autos three times per awakening from obviously from my initial tests on the gear sets versus A1 all the way through to A5. And what I can show you is that at A3, as you can see, I'll put the numbers up. There is a big damage spike gain from the third awakening. The fourth awakening is actually another little damage bonus, but the fifth awakening does tank your damage output in the guild boss by a reasonable amount. It's not insane, but it is definitely a damage loss on the fifth awakening. I'll put some clips up on the screen and maybe you can see what I mean, but very simply, as I've mentioned in the video a few times already, the talent has a big draw time. And during that draw time, Hex is not making any attacks. The third awakening is extending the duration of his ultimate mad truth every time he attacks a target inflicted with burning. His fifth awakening gives him a card draw every time he makes an attack. What this means is he is getting to his big card draw much faster, much more often. However, those card draws take a lot more time and in that time he's not attacking a burning target. And while he's not attacking a burning target, he's not extending the duration of mad truth, which in turn means that he's actually doing less damage because his ultimate will run out sooner and if his ultimate runs out sooner he is not firing the joker or well with awakening one it will be the fool so he's missing out on the full shots basically so yeah it's a bit of a, a weird one but hopefully the clip i put up it's it's a little bit nuanced it's not super super clear but very simply the mad truth is not extending as often because he's spending more time firing his talent which takes a long time and in that time he could have been making more attacks on burning targets to extend his ultimate 
So, that's that. That is, of course, Guild Boss. In other content, the Fifth Awakening is probably going to be better. You'll spend more time locked down firing like this, though, but... Yeah, I don't know. I would personally suggest not going for the Fifth Awakening because of this. He is mainly a Guild Boss hero. The Third and Fourth Awakenings are by far the best. And the Fourth Awakening 5% penetration does actually have a marked improvement, at least in my reasonable testing. Not crazy testing, free per attempt. I did not change any of the team, any of their gear, any of the autos. For sure, there should be much better tuning and timing of things it's not a perfect run it's just to give us a rough idea but it does seem to convey that the third awakening is a big damage bump in guild boss and the fifth awakening does drop your damage unfortunately so that is it the video is already quite long so i'm going to end the video here for now but i hope you did find it interesting if you have any tips or tricks regarding hex then please leave a comment as it will help people out in future and do let me know if there's any testing or any other things you want me to cover in the future videos thank you guys very much for watching have a great day take care and bye bye